Hi everyone, Professor Monty back, and we're going to talk about how to find absolute extrema, so maximum and minimum values, on a closed interval from A to B. So I've got a function up here. We're going to find the absolute extrema on the interval from negative 1 to 2. Now, we do what we typically do. We take the derivative set it equal to 0 and solve to find critical values. So I take the derivative, 3x squared minus 2x minus 1, I set it equal to 0. This a little harder to solve. It factors. If you don't remember how to factor this type, I've got a, another video that talks about factoring these trinomials using the illegal move method. You may want to check out. It works real nice. But I've already factored this one. It factors into 3x times x. And then it's going to be those are 1 and 1. This has to be a minus and a plus. So I just did using the trial and error method. But the, if you're not good with the trial and error method, the illegal move method is really nice. So anyway, I set each of these equal to zero as I normally would do. Subtract one, divide by three, and I get x is negative one third. Here I just add the one, x is one. Those are my two critical values. All right, so now what I do, first I make sure those critical values are in the interval that I'm looking at. If they're not in there, I have to throw them out because I'm only interested in the absolute max and min in that interval. So if this is outside, throw it out. It's not part of the answer. But these are both in that interval, so we're okay. But all I do is I don't have to do a chart of signs or anything. I'm just going to make a little chart where I've got x and f of x. I put in my critical values, negative one third and one. I plug in my endpoints, negative one and two. So these are my critical values. These are my endpoints. I'll say end, and I just plug them into the original function. Whichever gives me the largest value, that's my absolute max. Whatever the smallest value is, that's my absolute min. So I plug these in, and I've already done this. This comes to 59.27. So it's about 2.19. I plug in the one again into my original function. The original function is the y value. So that's what I'm getting here. So when I plug in one, I get one. When I plug in negative one, I also got one. And when I plug in two, I get four. So I look at these y values. The largest y value is my absolute max. So my absolute max is four. So I say, oh, my absolute max is four. Usually what they're going to write, they're going to say, hey, it happens at two. So my absolute value is f of 2, which is 4. Let me erase that. And then my absolute min, well, notice the min is 1. It happens twice. So I would say my absolute min, and typically the way they write it, is they're going to say, oh, it's f of 1, which is the same as f of negative 1. So let's write f of 1, which is f of negative 1, which is 1. So the minimum value is really 1. This is just saying, oh, it happens at negative one. It happens also at positive one. And my absolute max is four, but it happened at x equals two. And so that's what you do. The absolute max or min have to happen at a critical value or at one of the inputs. Can't happen anywhere else. So we don't have to do a chart of signs. We just check the y values, the function values, and see which one's the largest, absolute max, which one of the ones the smallest, absolute min. All right, so again, if you like these videos, please click on like, please subscribe to my channel, and we'll be able to make more of these videos. All right, so keep going, and you'll get this. Just take practice. Keep going.